This is poison ivy. This is also poison ivy. And so is this. I should know, I've got tons of it. So I'm gonna see if any of this stuff can kill it. All along the front of this property is poison ivy. This is my access road for the entire property, basically. Like, this is how I get into the property, and it's like 40 feet deep poison ivy. I thought this would be a good opportunity to experiment with some different poison ivy killers that aren't gonna just totally like vaporize all of this vegetation. The active ingredient in Roundup that is controversial and has been linked to cancer is called glyphosate which I'm probably mispronouncing. None of these solutions have glyphosate in them. The first one we're gonna try, this is a Bonide product. Bonide makes a lot of different uh, herbicides, fertilizers, and uh, most of them are pretty safe, at least in my experience. When you Google poison ivy killers that won't kill your lawn or kill everything else, this is one of the first products that comes up, so that's why we're gonna try it. One drawback to this is it is recommended for spot treatment. And obviously I've got a lot more than spot treatment happening here. It does come in a concentrate. So technically you could put it into a spray bottle like this for broad applications. We're gonna spot treat the crap out of some very specific spots. Look at that, it's blue. Hold on, I gotta get. So that's the stream. This is the broad spray. This is a bear product made by a sub-brand called BioAdvanced, and it's called Brush Killer. It's targeted for poison ivy, kudzu. The active ingredient in this is called triclopyr, which was invented around the same time as glyphosate back in the 70s. It's been found to be just as effective as not, if not faster acting than glyphosate, and yet it's safer However, it may require multiple treatments. So this is probably gonna be the thing I'm using the most today because I can use it in broader applications. I've seen those sunglasses are for like safety purposes. Yeah. And fashion, clearly. The next thing I'm gonna try is a homemade solution. This is a cup of salt with a tablespoon of dish soap. Mix it all together in a gallon jug and we can apply it across the board. We don't have to worry about scorching the earth with this stuff. If you do want something a little stronger, you can put some vinegar in there. Vinegar is a lot more acidic than what this solution is. Unfortunately, vinegar is gonna kind of change the pH level of our soil and it's gonna really prevent anything from growing. The salt mixture will do that to a degree, but not nearly as severely as the vinegar solution. Is this your front runner? That would be great because this is the cheapest. And if you get it on you, you don't really have to worry about anything. This is the pasture of poison ivy. You can see when they wet down, what it looks like. Oh boy, it doesn't smell great. Kinda smells like soap, right? I'm gonna go in there. Okay. Last and also least, this is a product that is now called Weed Clear. When I bought it, it had a different name. I bought it over 15 years ago. This is one of many products that you can use. Uh, it's made to treat grass without killing your grass. Kill the weeds in the grass without killing grass itself. I haven't had very much luck with this. You're supposed to use one fluid ounce per gallon. I doubled that to two fluid ounces. So I'm either gonna kill everything or probably nothing with this. This is just kind of like a, a bonus at the end because I hadn't happened to have it in my shed. Now it's time to make my bet on which one I think is gonna do the best job for that really heavy section at the front of my access road. It's a good thing I'm with you because I think the neighbors would be calling the police.
Parker. It does look like the poison ivy is starting to shrivel up a little bit. It's starting to wilt a little bit, I would say. This stuff back in here still looks pretty healthy. That stuff looks very healthy. Yeah, it does. <laughs> the weed clear. Mm. And look, this is wilting, I would say, faster. I think it's, I think it's uh, more wilted than what we saw back there with the weed clear. The stuff to the back where I couldn't really reach it, um, still going pretty strong. What you're saying, if you don't spray anything on it, it's going to stay alive. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, if you don't spray it, it won't die. Thank you, Mrs. Obvious. I did spray back here, it just, I didn't get as much on there. And that's, remember, this is one that was more meant for spot treatment. One point for Bonide. Our homemade solution. This looks pretty good. And we sprayed a good swath right in here. And it's definitely thinned out quite a bit. What's still here is looking pretty healthy, but you're seeing a lot of like brown on the leaves, a lot of lighter green, meaning it's, it's like starving. So I think we'll give Home Remedy one point, but maybe we give Bonide two points because that one looked a little bit stronger. Some pretty uh, mature, thick uh, poison ivy leaves that are starting to wilt. camera shy so I'd say one point for brush killer um, after three days kind of mixed results not as much death as I had hoped for so oh. let's spray it again and then we'll check check after another day or two what it's just such a morbid statement Normally I wouldn't pop in here and talk about subscribing because it's kind of annoying and I figure you know how YouTube works. If you want to support what I'm doing, the easiest way to do that is to subscribe to the channel. But I'm kind of making an exception in this case because if you want to see what happens with this property, I'm a little ways away from you know building anything here. I'm still just trying to kill the weeds and stuff. But if you do want to see what's happening here over the next several years of my life, uh, you may want to subscribe because these are not going to be instructional type videos. These are going to be just kind of like adventures, probably misadventures, and who knows what else. So I hope that you'll consider it. Now back to killing stuff. It's now been a full week since we sprayed the second time. So we're going to go see how everything's doing now. After a second spraying, it has rained a couple of times, which is to be expected. So let's check it out. All of this, we've got some discoloration, we've got some wilting, we've got some lying down on the job. We've also got some really strong, healthy looking poison ivy toward the back there. Discolored yellow. Discolored yellow, yeah, some tie dye. Meh, not too great for the weed clear, which I didn't have high hopes for it anyway. We don't just want wilting, we want shriveling and dying. Here's our bonite section. We've got more wilting and just kind of lethargic poison ivy here. I would say it's about half died off. You know, everything back in there that I was spraying kind of at a distance is starting to die back a little bit. But this is two sprays. It's just not enough. You know, it's, I wouldn't want to cut this for fear of still spreading uh, the the juices, what is it? Oil? Yeah, spreading the oils. Thank you. <laughs> poison the poison juice. juices. Yeah. This is definitely the best die off we've oh seen goodness. here. See all that brown and yellow? That stuff is dead. What was this? This was brush killer. This stuff is definitely dead. This area here was full of poison ivy. And now it's about half full. The middle section, which got a pretty good spray, has really died back. Uh, but there is still quite a bit of poison ivy in here. I sprayed all the way back to those thorns mm. and those are still doing pretty well. This was all brush killer. See all this here? All this is bright yellow. That's all poison ivy that's dying off. 
right back in there, which is good. Um, I tried to avoid some of the other weeds, but some of those are dying as well. So I think the big takeaway after two applications for all four products is the BioAdvanced is pretty much the clear winner from a potency and just pure effectiveness standpoint. It is a little bit more difficult to spray over larger areas. Uh, it's, it's just tiring to spray that thing, you know, for longer than five minutes or so. But it does come with a battery powered applicator that will spray over larger distances. The Bonide product did a pretty good job, but it's obviously not as, as potent. It's difficult to spray it over large areas. I will say on behalf of the soap and salt solution, it is a pretty good secondary option. All you need is a gallon pump sprayer, which you can pick up for like 12 or 15 bucks at most home improvement stores. And the ingredients that go into it are both cheap and safe. You know, you don't have to worry about spraying yourself. And finally, in fairness to Weed Clear, which is really not indicated for poison ivy, it is indicated for several hundred other weeds. So I ended up testing it in my yard on some dandelions and clover and some creeping charlie. And even though it's over 10 years old, it did a pretty good job of drying it up without harming any of my grass. So if used as directed, it's still a pretty good product. To sum everything up, here's a cheat sheet on how effective I found each solution to be. So if you're still watching at this point, thank you. I hope you found this helpful and I hope I'll see you on the next video. The next steps for me, I'm gonna come in here with a machine and clear this out. I definitely wouldn't come in here with a weed whacker and just go nuts. This vegetation is so thick, it was impossible for me to spray all the poison ivy. There's a lot of it hiding underneath the grass and brush. So I don't want those oils flying around. I also would never burn this. I wouldn't burn poison ivy under any circumstances. It's gonna get in the air, it's gonna get in the smoke, it's gonna get on your skin and potentially in your lungs. That, that, yep. that, that, and that, and that. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's like everywhere. Yep. It's impossible for me to ask you which one is not poison ivy because it's <laughs> basically all poison ivy. There's a butterfly in the sky. Tiny ivy. We've got medium-sized new ivy. We've got large, old, mature ivy. We've got giant ivy as big as my face. We even have a cat named Ivy. She's our neighbors. Until I do something about this poison ivy, it's like a fortress. It's like I bought an ivy farm. <laughs>